Um, yeah, if you leave the, if you left anything in the uh, in the mold. Well, actually, last year some people left some copper. They made some copper pieces and jewelry, mm -hmm. and then they left them in the mold. And they did some interesting things. Mm -hmm. There's some objects that you could leave in there that would actually um, potentially okay. do something interesting. And you're welcome to. I mean, we're all about it, trying new things. So yeah. Yeah, it's your face. <laughs> no. Related to that one, in the when you go in the metal shop, that right as you open the door, there is a little uh, wooden box that has a lot of scrap copper in it. Oh, great! So you can find some maybe pieces you want to experiment. With. That's great. Like a so is the copper bond to it or something? It, some of it melted, some of it didn't. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. But it sticks in no yep, matter what. Yep. Yep. Yeah. As long as it was. Um, which some one is it? Floated, some though. of it floated. Yeah. <laughs> So if it was embedded well, it sta it stayed. Um, right. It was a little tricky to figure out. What's but. the temperature the iron melts at? Uh, it'll melt at around 2,300 degrees, mm -hmm. and usually comes out of the furnace between 26 and 2,800 degrees. Glass. Right. glass is 23, 24. Mm -hmm. yeah. Glass is 23, around 22, 23. Yeah. All depends also what the flux is. You put the veins down. down. Pyrex glass. Josh told me. Or yeah. yeah. the good side, yeah. So I put the. Good side down. Yeah, but this side oh. is the one with all the texture, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, yeah, Wait, sorry. Which side is facing the, the more, oh, the more oh. textural side, even though this is the... Right. Which means it's facing up when it's... Exactly. In the Whatever you want it to look like is what it will look like in the mold. Yeah. So that's the mold. I mean, yeah, then we'll take this and we will put a release in this mold which we use a graphite and denatured alcohol mix, so it's liquid. And we will paint that, spray, actually we'll spray it in there so that the iron doesn't stick, fuse to the, the sand, which it tends to do it because it's so hot. Um, oh, and then it's better. Um, so we'll put that in there and then we'll cast it. So this is what we'll be doing today. Like I said, we'll, the scratching is one of the easier ways, but if you, wanna, if you can find some thin, flat items that you want to stick in the mold, that's great. We're more than happy to do that. And we'll talk about any ideas that people are having that want to experiment with different things. We're more than willing to work with you for that. Wood, cast iron to wood. You can pre-char the wood and get really cool uh, charcoal texture. Um, if you want to cast iron onto rocks and shells, they tend to blow up, but that could be cool. Um, you can inclusion cast stuff, get stuff stuck in the metal. So the inclusion cast is like the um, putting the copper in there. Yeah. Or other objects, if you were. If you Some want. things we might not want to do, but just run your ideas. Well, like if you were to inclusion cast the leaf, would that just have burned out? Yeah. Well, it'll, well, it'll actually leave a residue of the leaf, and oh. so it'll probably take up some of the detail that you might want to get. So it'll, it might, but it will break off. I mean, you'd get like charred yeah. um, leaf that would just pull off of the mold later, yeah. and you might just get a kind of a blank. You might even get a little bit of the... It's just the carbon left over, the residue of the leaf burning yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, which you'd probably lose. Somewhere. I mean, it would. you could definitely try it, and we're not against it, but you'd get more of the leaf pattern by pulling it out. Can you use glass? Glass yeah. is the one thing that's a little tricky because it's not annealed after it gets heated. Mm -hmm. So the potential is that it could explode later, mm -hmm. whenever. Somebody did a marble once, and that worked. Mm -hmm. um, somebody did... Uh, that sort of glass frit that they use in, uh, to make a road line shiny, that worked. We haven't heard of it exploding yet. I think, didn't Beth do a piece with glass in that? Maybe she did. The furnace, Josh made this awesome furnace that runs like a dream. It's called the BC. Um, we've been doing this, I was thinking, I was trying to think of it while you are talking, like, we've been doing this for like seven years now. So, we've kind of figured out a lot. We figured it out pretty much on our own, too, as far as how to build the furnaces and went through a whole phase of different designs, and this one runs really well. Um, so you have the top of the furnace, and if you want to come and look inside, it's just like this hollow cavity, and then at the bottom there's a door, there, and then in the inside you have this refractory lining that's able to withstand tremendous amounts of temperature. Um, and the furnaces run, we don't really actually know because we don't have a pyrometer that will read that temperature because it's like almost 3,000 degrees. Um, so it's really freaking hot. <laughs> um, so 
then let's see the other so you have the, the spout out here um, this is where the metal is actually going to pour out of um, and then the other key things is um, you have the um, slag holes over here where the metal will fill up in the cavity in the well in the furnace and then the top What's going to happen is the metal, the crappy stuff, all the impurities are going to float to the top of the metal and then we'll have really clean metal at the bottom near the spout. So up at the top, there's going to be slag that starts coming out to all the crappy stuff. And then we'll be able to determine, okay, well, we have so much metal in the furnace um, and then the slag will start coming out and then we'll know, okay, we should really empty the furnace. Um, so the... These, it's called a, a bot, and so we'll plug the hole when it's filled with metal, um, and then it's a clay and uh, sawdust and sometimes like vermiculite, um, so that it's 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 clay, so it'll harden, but it's not like a piece of pottery that's so hard that you can't break through. So um, we're able to put a spike in and then. Over here is where the air flows in. Um, a lot of times, some of the furnaces, you can actually look inside the furnace as well, but this furnace isn't designed to so receive. Oh, wait, they can. They can. Yeah. Yeah. Where is? The eye of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> now there's a. Okay, so yeah, when we take this off and we put this on, we have this that you can actually see what's going on inside. You can actually see the metal dripping. It's called the we pass these around. Um, and so this it's just a type of coal that has a lot of the impurities taken out and we're able to bring this up to like 3,000 degrees. Um, so I mean, you think about it as like your backyard grill where you have your charcoal and then you have air flowing <coughs> through it. And if you have more air flowing through it, it's gonna get a lot hotter. Um, and so this is just a much more intense version of, of that, where you have air that's being blown in um, and heating that fuel and... The breath of the beast. Yeah, so this is the blower. Thank you, Josh. Um, so we hope you can start putting the iron in. Um, we want to have the furnace preheated. And we want to have the coke in there. Um, and this the larger sizes of coke that we fill the furnace with and fill it up to about here or so. And then we want to set the coke on fire and heat the furnace up because this is all cold right now and you know if it's outside sometimes there's moisture in there so we need to get the furnace ready before we start adding iron and that usually takes like 45 minutes to an hour of just using, we use propane and we have a, a torch that we put inside so that it just slowly ignites the coke, gets the coke going, starts heating up the refractory um, and getting the furnace up to temperature because if you don't do that, if you just put the iron in, it's not going to melt because it's not up to temperature. Um, and, you know, there's, you learn that when <laughs> you, like, decide to, like, turn, take the, the, um, preheat torch off and you turn on the air and get it to start blowing and if, it's, if you do that too soon then the air just actually cools the furnace and then you have to backtrack and start preheating again. So um, so we preheat the furnace till it gets to a good temperature and we do it pretty much by sight um, and timing it. And then we add the blower and so you have that combination of the fuel and the air just creating this intense heat and energy inside the furnace and then we start putting the iron in and the iron that we use is just radiators that we break up so sm there's small pieces like what, what's great about radiators is they're thin so they melt really easily and we break them up into small pieces so it helps melt faster <laughs> so how many radiator, radiators is that over there in that pile? Um, <laughs> 550 pounds worth, so you know, half of, well, let's see, it's a living room. Do <laughs> 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 they collect radiators? Yeah, yeah. 
as, as many as we can get our hands on. Yeah, if anyone knows of any radiators. <laughs> how far do you go for them? Well, it depends on how desperate we are. Went to a third what about walk up to Portland? Yeah. Well, that's what two are desperate though. have like the enamel area, so the, the, the um, radiators are really just perfect. So mm -hmm. in. I might have some if you want to throw the box in. Okay. Um, radiators, stove, uh, anything thin that's bustable. This guy is a very small furnace, so it likes to have small bites of food. Um, the reason why you want to break things up, it's like, you know, you don't just put, put the whole block of Benedita on your nachos. You want to, like, shred it up so it can make, Yeah, especially with this furnace. Uh, if we've made larger furnaces that can handle huge chunks of radiators, that just, they run so hot and it just works really well, so. This, this little guy likes the little stuff. Um, so we put the coke in, preheat it, then we start putting the iron in, and what we do is we layer it, because we want to keep that coke hot, and the coke is going to start burning away, and you're going to have the metal melting and dripping down, and you want to have it layered so you have coke and iron and coke and iron and coke, so um, you're, you're just layering the iron so it's 